All right, uh, so we have a question regarding one of the problems in our uh, assigned uh, lessons, lesson 1.10.5. Just keep spinning. All right, so this one is pretty much, it has, we're starting now where it gets a little more complicated. You know, now we have more words that we're working in. Uh, in this case, we would call it conditions. Uh, that you may not know what, as you write programs, you don't know what kind of conditions or what to expect on who's getting your program. So when you write your code, you write your code in a way that it's going to allow for many types of uh, conditions. Um, if there's a condition that you think may encounter, then you write exceptions to those conditions. But we're not there yet. Right now, we're going to write a program that can complete or fulfill and meet these conditions right here. One, two, three, four, and five. So, for this one, we have, uh, let me see what the exercise is. So, exercise, and it says Carol is in a pile of tennis balls. We want to spin until there are no more tennis balls on the pile, right? And if we look at these worlds, these conditions, or uh, what's laid out for us, it shows that all these have a ball that it starts with, except for one, and that's world three. So we have to know that, okay, we write a, a condition that exists, and if it doesn't exist, it'll stop or continue, or whatever, what it, whatever it is that you're writing. And in this case, uh, there's a tennis ball, but one doesn't. So let's see what else it wants. It wants to uh, make sure that the test is okay. Uh, Carol will start facing east, but will end up facing in a different direction based on the number of tennis balls that were on the pile. Okay. So, all right. I don't like the way they word this, but I get the gist. They want you to have it ending um, in a certain way that I guess it doesn't matter how it ends. As long as there's no uh, tennis ball, I guess. So, Carol's in a pile of tennis balls. We want Carol to spin until there are no more balls. Okay, so this one doesn't have any. So, we want it to spin until there are no balls. So, right here, it'd be like there's none to, to do, so it shouldn't spin at all. So, let's try it. All right. So we have uh, our method run. We always have to have a main method. All right. Um, that starts the program. Just like think of your computer when you start it up. You need a power button to get it up and running. You need a light switch to turn on the light. This is your main method, your main program that makes it run. All right. Okay. So let's go back to this. So now we know that. Our condition has to be that it has to spin. As long as there's the tennis ball, it's going to keep spinning. If there are no more, it's going to stop. So this is a great start right here. While, okay, while that condition is true, while balls are present, balls present, then we want Carol to spin. All right, we have a turn right. Turn right is what? So if we also write a method for that one, let's pretend I'm just going to write it out. So we did a private void method turn. And I want you to understand why I'm doing this is I want you to see what the problem is with this, with adding turn right. Um, it's a good way to think logically on what you want it to do, but it's not going to give us the answer we want. Because this is telling uh, Carol to turn left three times, right? And if it does that, it, then it keeps spinning even if there are no balls. And they want you to only spin if there's a ball present, right? So this condition fails because it's going to continue turning left after the first time because we don't know how many tennis balls there are, all right? So we don't know if it, if, if there's five, then it's only going to stop at three, right? If there's one, then it's going to stop after one, but then it errors out because there's two because you're going to go run. Okay, condition, line number seven, while the balls are present, okay, there's a ball present, Turn right, so it's going to turn once, takes a ball, takes a ball, takes a ball. But what if there are more balls? Or what if there's less than it ends right here? So it's going to error out. That's a that's going to give you a problem right here. So let's get rid of that. We don't need that. But what if we were to say, okay, while balls are present, why don't I just turn once? Because if that condition is saying, hey, while there's a ball present, I want you to keep doing what you're doing. If that condition no longer exists, then let's end this. So... Let's get rid of it. Let's uh, let's change that to left. 
All right. So now we have a condition that's asking, hey, while this is happening, go ahead and do these things. If it no longer happens, it's going to go one, two. Oh, then we get another problem here. Uh, great way to think of this because now you're you're actually setting a parameter, okay? Uh, which we get more into as we go further into co programming. Uh, these parameters you're you're telling them now that hey, I want you to turn left while there's balls present. I want you to take that ball while there while that ball's present. And if you're taking the ball, I want you to do it that for every ball you're gonna do that. That condition is that int i, the variable i, that's, that's assigned to zero, so it starts at zero. Okay, that already is a problem here. Um, i zero, i zero, is less than nine, so this is only going to turn nine times, right? Starting at zero. Because we remember ones and zeros, we start at zero and it work our way up, so it's actually going to stop at eight, but nine. Okay, and it's going to increment once every time. And you're saying less than and equal to nine. Okay, it's going to take the ball. We don't know how many tennis balls there are, so we can't use this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. It's a great way to start thinking in that logic, but right now we don't need that. Right now, we got, uh, let's see that. Uh, let's get rid of this one. It's an extra. Okay, so we got, let me see which one that. That's that. That's that. So we have an extra one. So let's get rid of. Let's get rid of this one. Okay, now we should be fine. Let's just bring this in. Okay, so now let me see if it runs. So I'm gonna reset, run. And I can speed this up. I didn't even actually speed this up. We don't know how many tennis balls there are, but now it stopped, right? Because it ended. So now let's try it uh, with a different world, make sure. Let's go try with the one with zero. All right, let's see if that happens. So while balls are present, we're going to turn left turn. But if there's no, nothing present, what do we do? Nothing. We just let it sit there. Right now, we're not getting deep into programming. We're only kind of learning the basics and kind of the, the concepts. And it's difficult. It, believe me, programming is, is difficult. But we're going at it slow. Baby steps. So here we go. No ball. We run this. Okay, let me go slow so you guys can see what just happened. So reset. So on, your, on, on this code, remember, it starts here, then 4, then 5, then 6, then checks if nothing if that condition doesn't exist then it just goes to 12 and it ends so let's try it again so your line goes yellow okay that's it see that condition didn't exist and it ended uh go ahead and keep working on this program this is a it's a, a difficult one i know i'll give you the answer i shouldn't have i didn't want to i actually had another project set up for you guys uh, to show you but uh here it is if you have any more questions on your other problems uh, go ahead and email me uh, uh and let me know right away okay talk to you guys later